Hi there folks, so today we're going to talk about how glycogen is made and stored in the body. Uh, it all starts again with the hexose monophosphate pool, the good old HMP. And remember glucose is phosphorylated by hexokinase or by glucokinase depending on liver or regular tissues. Liver is the one with glucokinase, every other tissue has hexokinase. Uh, and that's phosphorylated to HMP using of course ATP. Because glucose directly enters into the hexose monophosphate pathway. Uh, fructose 6-phosphate goes into glycolysis using the PFK1 enzyme. Yeah, of course, also uses ATP. And remember, all of these enzymes that use any kind of nucleotide triphosphate also need a magnesium. And that magnesium helps deal with some of the charge on the tails of these enzymes. Uh, or the of ATP or UTP or GTP or whatever it has, you need a uh, need a magnesium around. So this is one path you could always go right into glycolysis, or you could start going and storing some of that extra glucose, not only using it in glycolysis but storing it away as glycogen. Uh, and glycogen is made in a two-step uh, synthesis. Um, the actual flux control points are glycogen synthase and phosphorylase. Uh, the reason that the one we're going to talk about now, UGP glucose. Um, pyrophosphorylase is not a flux control point is because UDP glucose is used in a lot of ways for uh, for making glycosides or uh, modifying proteins or other stuff. It's not dedicated to glyco gly glycogen at this point. It can be used for lots of stuff. Um, we've, we've seen one place where, for example, UDP glucose can be switched with UDP galactose using an epimerase. So um, we've seen that before. So UDP glucose is not dedicated to glycogen. So these are our two flux controls. Those are the points where we're dedicated to becoming or breaking down from glycogen. Um, so this first enzyme, UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase, is a phosphorylase enzyme, which is something that breaks down a larger molecule using some sort of a phosphate. Now this is specifically a pyrophosphorylase, which means that a PPI is generated in this case, the enzyme is named for the reverse reaction. UDP glucose plus pyrophosphate goes to glucose 1-phosphate plus UTP. So it's named as a pyrophosphorylase of UDP glucose. Um, so that's just from the, the uh, historical uh, basis of naming it. That's where it was first discovered. But we now think about it running the opposite direction. Just like a lot of things we see in glycolysis are named backwards. And that's okay. It's true. Uh, you just need to know both sides of the reaction. So here we're going to bring in a UTP in the direction we're going and kick off a pyrophosphate and make a UDP glucose. So the mechanism for this is pretty easy, it's pretty um, pretty common and we'll show you how it works. So we're starting out here with our UTP, you can see our uracil is on the uh, ribose triphosphate and we also have our glucose 1-phosphate which is a member again of the HMP. HMP intermediates are not dedicated to any one pathway, they're common across many pathways uh, and they're all at rapid equilibrium. So if you bring in a lot of glucose 6, all the other ones are also going to come up. Glucose 1 and fructose 6 are also going to rise at the same, or fall at the same rate. So they're all kind of a common feedstock for all of our met metabolism. So what we're going to do here, as you can see by our balanced equation, is we're going to react to glucose 1-phosphate to make a UDP glucose. So that means that the phosphate here at our 1 position is our nucleophile. So all we have to do is attack, and specifically we are going to attack at the alpha phosphate of UDP, UTP. So alpha, beta, and gamma phosphates are possible. A lot of kinases and uh, things we've looked at before use the gamma phosphate. Um, not very many use the beta, uh, and quite a few use the alpha. Uh, if you're trying to break off a pyrophosphate, which is this little guy here. So we've attacked the phosphate. Of course, we have to break a bond. We're going to reform it, and we're going to kick off our pyrophosphate. And we've now made a U-2-phosphates glucose, UDP glucose. Here's the structure of that guy. Here is our uracil, our ribose, our diphosphate, so that's UDP glucose. That's an alpha linkage to UDP. Uh, and then, we, of course, we have a pyrophosphate. Now, this UDP glucose, again, can be used in other enzymes. The UDP kind of forms an enzymatic handle for things like epimerases to use. It's also good for making sugar-modified 
um, proteins and glycosides and uh, other kinds of things that you need uh, to have sugar modifications for, lipids maybe. Um, and so this thing can be used for a lot of different purposes, not only glycogen. Uh, so this actually, delta G for that part of the reaction is right around zero. It runs at equilibrium. Now, the pyrophosphate, on the other hand, can make this thing go in one direction by being cleaved using a pyrophosphatase. Delta G for that uh, is about negative 17 kilojoules per mole. Uh, a pyrophosphatase is going to break a pyrophosphate into two phosphates, so it's going to make two PI. And that's going to keep our reaction chugging along in the forward direction. As long as our pyrophosphate is being cleaved by pyrophosphatase, it's going to give us 2PI and a bunch of free energy that we can use to drive the reaction forward.